Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Maurizio Pochettino is talking big again. He is building us up again. And when you build us up like this, you create a certain expectation which could work for you. And at the same time, if it doesn't turn out the way you've wanted it to turn out, then these expectations could absolutely blow up in your face. So let's talk about what Maurizio Pochettino has said over the last 24 hours. Let's go. All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look at what Maurizio Pochettino said over the last 24 hours. He's said a lot of things which will look. Once again, we're going to look both sides of the story here. Something obviously that will excite us as a fan base, but at the same time, we need to understand what has happened in reality and is what Maurizio Pochettino is saying, it will come into fruition. So we need to we need to make that assessment. Now, Maurizio Pochettino was asked how far Chelsea are from winning trophies. I think months. We want to win this season. Uh, then he further goes on to say, we want to win all we are involved in the Carabao Cup, FA Cup, and League. We want to play for a win. We cannot say in one year, in two years, or in three years. In the circumstances we have, we need to be positive and work. We don't have time to waste thinking about the future. We need to perform today. I don't know where to start with all of this stuff because look at the caliber of players we've got, you know, the kind of transfer business that we did with plethora of young players and we're still buying young players when you think about that does this statement make sense winning today with kids that's one thing look at the way we've started look at the way we've had what, what kind of a pre-season we had and and the kind of football that we're playing now does it make sense let's break all of this down first of all i think Maurizio pochettino is trying to lay down a gauntlet that i'm not going to talk like how previous managers did you know, the likes of Frank Lampard, who said in his first stint, you know, Chelsea are at least two, three seasons away from winning anything substantial. And then Thomas Tuchel comes in and wins the Champions League. Then we've had Graham Potter saying, you know, that's life. We have to be patient. Um, you know, we have to we have to trust the process and believe in the project, this, that, the other. Uh, obviously, then Frank Lampard came in again the second second time around. Uh, which was once again a massive disaster, and Frank Lampard pretty much put put it out there that you know this team is very far away from winning anything at the moment, and a lot of players need to leave. A lot of players don't want to play for Chelsea, and then we had the summer window where we got rid of a lot of players. We brought in quite a few players as well. We had a very good preseason, in my opinion, and of course, four matches in, four points, plethora of injuries. Now, looking at this particular statement, does this make sense? Does this make sense? So, you know, in one sort of hand, we can say, Maurizio Pochettino, thank you. Yeah, as a Chelsea manager, you should be talking like this. You 100% should be talking about winning every single time, you know, not just participating in any of these competitions like the Carabao Cup, FA Cup, the Premier League as well. You need to do your level best to, to push Chelsea uh, yeah, to to a certain limit where we are competing for these titles. So that's fantastic. Kudos to Pochettino to talk like that because as a Chelsea manager, I think that's the bare minimum. But the other side of the story is look at the kind of business that we've done. We've brought in Cole Palmer. We've brought in you know in the likes of Nicholas Jackson. We've got a plethora of young players, right? We've got Ian Martin, we've got Chupamika, we've got even the likes of Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo are very, very young as well. Defenders, uh, you know, Levi Cowell is young and many more, many, many more are very, very young players. So when you've, when you've got a plethora of young players in your team, is it wise to go out there and say, we need to win today? Is this a message for the players, perhaps, to make them believe that, look, there is no two ways about it. You have to win. Players like Madueke have recently said, if you're at Chelsea Football Club and you're not thinking about winning titles, then you're in the wrong building. So that's all well and dandy. You know, making the players believe 
this is the minimum expectation. But is it all aligning? Because some parts of the fan base, we're already resorting to <clears throat> the fact that how can we expect to win anything substantial with a bunch of kids? So somewhere along the line, if if you see what I'm trying to say here, it doesn't seem to align. You know, we're saying one thing, we're doing something else. If we're saying we need to win today and we need to win everything, we, we should be looking at buying experienced players that have the capacity to win something today immediately. To say all of this and to put all that pressure on, on, on our youngsters, yeah, there's so much talk that's happening in regards to Mudrik recently as well. He's another young player. And we're talking about being patient with him and developing him. Similarly with Nicholas Jackson, who's recently missed a couple of really, really big glaring chances as well. And we look talking about us being patient with him too. Backup striker Armando Breuer just coming back from injury. So somewhere along the line, this conversation is not matching up. Great that we've said this, but all this does for me is over the next few fixtures, this is what I've been saying recently, we've got... Bournemouth straight after the international break. Then we've got Aston Villa at home. Then we've got Brighton in the Carabao Cup. I think after that, we've got Fulham and then Burnley. Five matches coming up. That will paint the picture. That will paint the picture to see whether we are capable of doing this, what Maurizio Pochettino has just said here. As I said, it's great. It's great we are saying this. But words are cheap now. Words are cheap. We are coming off a such a pathetic season from last season. Actions need to be louder. Actions need to be a lot louder than words. So, ladies and gentlemen, you let me know. You let me know how you feel about these, these comments, this statement from Maurizio Pochettino, which encouraging, encouraging none nonetheless, but is it aligning? Is it aligning with what we are talking about? You know, we're talking about winning now, but then we keep talking about process and patience. Like literally, straight after the Nottingham Forest loss, Maurizio Pochettino was talking about being being patient and believing in the process. So, is Maurizio Pochettino perhaps living living a bipolar life? Do you know what I mean? Is he living a lie at the moment? Uh, we, as a fan base, would we appreciate if he just came out and said, "Look." We will try our level best to win everything, but we at the same time need to understand there's a lot of young players and we've got to be patient for them to develop. And But meanwhile, we obviously have a certain standard that we want to hit. Should he be talking in that sort of sense? I don't know. You let me know, ladies and gentlemen, how you feel about all of these conversations that's happened in you know recent times where Maurizio Pochettino is saying all of this. So let me know in the comment section how you feel about that. Me? I'm just a bit confused because things are not aligning. Pochettino is saying something, but we're doing something else, which is totally not aligning with the statements. Maurizio Pochettino was asked, how have you found the transfer window? Tough. I knew, I knew before I signed that this is the situation and this is why I'm not complaining and saying nothing negative. I think it's positive as uh, as are the projects they create and have in mind. They are doing a fantastic show in trying to do what they wanted. So, look, of course, the transfer window would have been very tough. Um, so many players that were part of the setup of Chelsea Football Club for so long has gone. Not just the players, so many backroom staff as well. There's been a multitude of changes that's been happening over the last you know, 12 months or so since the new owners have come in. So, of course, it's not going to be easy. Maurizio Pochettino himself has just recently arrived. And, and within within his arrival, during his, you know, time frame so far, he's already seen a lot of changes as well. So stability is something that we've not had. And I think uh, yeah, this is something that we definitely badly needed over the next 12 months. But stability is also very much correlated to being somewhat successful, being somewhat consistent with your performances. If you consistently drop points and lose, that stability is very difficult to come by because you can't trust the process for too long that is simply not delivering. You need to see some sort of indication of success that, you know what, it's worthwhile sticking by that process because it's going somewhere. No point in sticking by a process if 
by the end of let's say you know october or start of december we are lingering around 10th and 11th again because then you have to say well, what's going on because the squad the club is good enough to be a lot higher than just 10th and 11th if you see that the squad's around 6th or 5th 5th or 6th then you can say do you know what yeah stick by it stick by it because we're at a certain level that is acceptable for the time being but is also a launch pad for the future that you know what i can see something happening so of course it would have been tough and of course um you know we 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 need to be uh, we need to be realistic with with uh, Maurizio Pochettino and and um, you know the level of transfer business that we've done now with the plethora of injuries as well but yeah, it, it definitely would have been a tough situation for Maurizio Pochettino. As he's saying, I knew, I knew before I signed that this is a situation and this is why I'm not complaining and saying nothing negative. So it, I think it's positive as, as the projects they create and have in mind. So look, I'm glad that he's got this positive outlook and um, he should. We've got a bunch of really, really good players for him to do well. You know, we've been told that he's a particular manager that works well with young players. Um, and we've got a we've got a plethora of talented young players. So on top of that, you know, you've got superstars in the likes of Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo, who are also young, don't forget, but still very, very talented superstars, which can um, who can who can definitely help uh, achieve our our goals this season, which I feel is bare minimum champions league qualification and then then we see what we do next season so ladies and gentlemen let me know what you thought about these couple of comments from Maurizio Pochettino first in regards to you know winning trophies literally months away apparently we're winning trophies and you know the transfer window being tough on him last but not least ladies and gentlemen I want to share this with you guys footy headlines have created a mock-up of how the blue orange and white Chelsea 2024-25 kit could look um these guys are quite they're they're quite accurate you know with their leaks it tends to be whatever they're coming up with it tends to be how Chelsea end up doing the designs anyway so they would get some informations from from within Chelsea and, and Nike and whatnot whoever's designing I think it's Nike there you go so if this is the if this is the leak uh, I think this is probably how the design might look like. So it looks nice. I mean, everyone obviously at times in the beginning has reservations, but slowly but surely we tend to like it. Riyadh there, that's a nice little logo there. A nice clean finish, Chelsea logo. I do like the jersey, that the shirt that we have now, that golden sort of logo, that um, sort of kind of like a hologram, kind of golden, changes into green. It looks very, very nice. So, uh, you know, could they adopt that? I don't know. But this particular setup looks very nice, very clean. Chelsea logo, Nike logo, Riyadh. We're going to have the infinite um, athlete on the sleeve as well. So don't forget next season. This season, obviously, we're going to get infinite, uh, infinite athlete um, on the front of the shirt. And then hopefully next season, we get Riyadh with a lucrative, lucrative offer of about 60 million or so. But we do need to make Champions League qualification. That apparently is the caveat. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you felt about everything uh, we talked about. Please let me know in the comment section. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Till next time. See ya.